Thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. For more information, check the affiliate link in the description. In this video, I'm gonna share the process of creating this logo animation by using Illustrator and After Effects. It's not gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but rather a breakdown that includes a time-lapse, some tips and tricks along the way, and I'll tell you about the tools I use that help speed up my workflow. The logo is from an academy based in Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, that offers in-person courses for graphic, motion, and web design. If you're interested, you can check them out through the links in the description. So after analyzing the logo, I opened up Photoshop and started creating a rough storyboard. At this stage, I'm not worried about making it look pretty, just as long as it conveys the idea. The concept I came up with was as follows. The pencil would shoot upwards and spin around, drawing the bottom letters as well as the line on the side, and then the owl would appear and make the entire logo spin as a reference to how owls tend to look upside down. In the meantime, merging the icon elements together and finally have the upper letters come in. Originally this was the idea I settled for, but you'll see in the end why I decided to scrap a certain portion of the animation. It was then time to import the logo in Illustrator and set it up in a way that would make it easy for me to achieve the animation concept. I split the pencil in its own shape, sliced one half, mirrored it to the other side, and then merged both of them to get this symmetrical pencil shape. I did the same for the owl and also created a separate shape for the circle. I used the scale tool and set the anchor point to a spot that would make it easy for me to match the scale to the original shape. After organizing the layers, I set the artboard size to full HD resolution, scaled everything up, and then made sure to have a comp open in After Effects with the same resolution, and finally used Overlord to send the shapes over with the split shapes to layers option checked, so each layer would come in separately. I then added a background with an off-white color so my eyes wouldn't burn. I hid everything I didn't need so I could then focus on the pencil animation first. You can hit Y to bring up the anchor point tool and then hold Ctrl to snap it to any spot you want. I like to use the free reposition anchor point script which has 9 custom positions for quickly moving the anchor point of a layer or even multiple layers. For the most part I've been using Void, a free plugin from Battleaxe that replaces nulls, solids and adjustment layers with shape layers to keep the project clean from those pesky solids. For animation, I usually use multiple null objects, that way I can break up each section by using them as parents to make it easier for me to achieve the desired animation. First, I start by setting the poses, so to say, with linear keyframes, and then move them around to figure out the timing. In this case, I had the pencil scale up from its bottom point, and then had it rotate in place, before then animating the position on a different null object by separating the x and y dimensions so I could work with the value graph. For controlling the easing of keyframes, I use the graph editor in combination with the paid extension Flow. I find Flow to be quite efficient and I can even save custom presets to quickly try out different looks. Another tool I use when dealing with keyframes is Ease Copy, which allows you to copy the value or easing from one keyframe to another. I then re-enable the bottom letters as I continue to animate the pencil to move in an arc so I could have it correctly point towards the letter that it was currently writing. For the second airborne part, I once again use another null object to carry that movement. To create a curved path, you need to right click on your keyframes, go to keyframe interpolation, under spatial interpolation, choose continuous bezier. I then brought in the two lines on the side. At first, I was trying to have the tip of the pencil be perfectly in line, so it seemed like it was drawing it, but that was causing problems with the arc being unnatural, so I later scrapped that idea and had the pencil offset a little bit, just like it is with the bottom letters, in order to get a more natural movement. The pencil was driving the entire animation in a way, so it was very important to make it flow with a pleasing motion. For the lines, I created a perfect circle by holding shift and double clicking on the ellipse tool, removed the fill, lined it up with the original lines, and then used trim paths to cut off the circle to the area I needed. You can use the set first vertex function to determine from which point the trim paths starts. I then proceeded to animate the line reveal. Moving on to the owl, I duplicated the original shape, deleted everything apart from the main silhouette mask, and then used that as a mat to cut out the bottom part of the owl so it emerges from behind a mask that has the same shape at the bottom as the original 
original logo. Once the rotation timing and easing was dialed in, I then moved the keyframes over so I could take care of the pencil landing alongside the owl without having to worry about working with awkward angles and only then bring back the rotation keyframes. At this point, I was trying to remove any intersection between the pencil and the line so nothing gets mixed together in order to maintain visual clarity. To morph the owl shape into the original final look, I used the paid extension Pen Pal 2, which brings some pretty useful illustrator-like features inside of After Effects, such as snapping on an angle. I then added the inner pencil and owl colors, enabled the circle, added a stroke, and used the set matte effect so it would be visible only inside the owl shape. I don't know why I didn't just use the alpha matte feature in the timeline instead, that would have worked just fine. I wanted the icon elements to be smaller at first, so there would be more room for them to move around, especially with the pencil flying all over the place. But of course, at the end, I had to bring it back to its final position and size by using another null object. It was now time to animate the letters, so I went back to Illustrator, selected the bottom letters, enabled the Explode Layers option so each letter would come in on its own. That way I could center their anchor points and have them come in one by one. I did the same thing for the upper letters and even slapped the trademark on there. At this point, I realized I had made a mistake on the bottom part of the owl, so I fixed that as well as morphed the pencil to go to its final shape by animating their mask paths. In the end, this is what I had and although I like the idea of the owl being upside down, it was feeling a bit too slow for a logo animation, so I removed the rotation, tweaked the lines, pencil and owl timings, made the pencil shoot down with more speed and then used that as an excuse to overshoot the entire icon with some bounce and finally ended up with this which I think looks a lot more energetic and fitting for a logo animation but still let me know which version do you prefer all right guys so that was pretty much it and although this wasn't a step-by-step -step tutorial I hope you were still able to get some value out of it. There's also a tutorial on the channel on how I went about sound designing this logo animation by using DaVinci Resolve and Soundly, alongside many more educational videos. Thanks for watching and being patient all the way through, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.